Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. For this video, I will show you guys how I made this Lilith doll from Hextian. Alright, April Fools! This is in fact delightful here, but I'm teaming up and collaborating with my friend Hextian to bring you two unique dolls. I bet the intro gotcha though, right? So for this project, Christian and I each designed a bust concept of a doll in our signature styles, then switched artwork. Because our styles are so different, we knew this would be interesting. So, first and foremost, let's see his concept art for me. Lilith Von Croy. With her sanguine and sapphire eyes, she has seen it all. Lilith has lived for more than a thousand years and nothing can faze her. Throughout, she has taken different faces and forms that reflect the period. I may not see my reflection, but that doesn't stop me from looking my best. As a vampire, her goal is to find her one and only to spend the rest of eternity with. So for this project, I'll be using an Ever After High Blondie Locks. Coincidentally, I've already made these round Sculpey clay earrings that exactly match the concept art, so I got lucky there. I think I was planning on making this doll a Princess Peach at some point. Using a sharp pair of thread scissors, I cut off her hair. Cutting it close to the head will make removing the stubble easier in the next step. I saved her blonde hair this time because I thought I might use it for another doll. To remove the head, immerse it in hot or boiling water to soften the vinyl. After a couple of seconds, tug the head loose with a cloth to protect your hand from the heat. The idea is to damage the neck peg as little as possible so the head won't be floppy when we put it back on. To remove the rest of the stubble, I take a pair of pliers and use scraping motions against the inside of the head to pull the plugs loose. Keep hot water nearby to re-soften the head and she'll be cleaned up in no time. Using acetone or nail polish remover, I remove the factory paint. Christian's concept art shows Lilith with bright, cherry red hair, and I don't happen to have that color on me. So I decided to dye doll hair to the color I wanted. Now this probably deserves its own in-depth video, but to give you the gist of it, Take white nylon doll hair and use synthetic polyester dyes to create the color you want. The brand I used was I Dye Poly from Joanne Fabrics. Using a designated pot, I prepared a small amount of the dye because you don't need much and dip in the hair. Voila! Once it's dyed, rinse it in cold water and give it several sessions of shampooing. I only shampoo washed it once and that's really going to cause problems later on, so... After coating the scalp with a red acrylic to match the hair, the plugging process begins. I use a drill chuck holding a needle in place for my reroute tool, but if you'd rather buy one ready to go, there's one available on dollyhair.com. Take a couple of hairs, feed them onto your needle, and plunge it into the head. It may seem time consuming, but it's kind of relaxing. The same way knitting takes a while, but it's rewarding, you know? Just turn on Netflix and plug until it's over. It's finally done, and the reason I rooted it in an odd way is to prepare for how the hair will part and form the hairstyle later on. But for now, seal those loose plugs with a waterproof glue. I'm using Fabri-Tac. Stick the nozzle down in there and do your best to hit all the plugs. I squeeze a little extra around the part and the hairline for good luck. After the reroute, I noticed that the face had light red marks on it. I was really hoping that was just acrylic paint from the head, because that would have come off with acetone, but it didn't, so this must have come from the hair dye. But I'm not one to give up on a doll and I'm confident I can cover those up, so after securing her hair out of the way, I'm going to spray her with Mr. Super Clear and then start the face. First, I add blush with pastels and draw vague line work onto the face with a red watercolor pencil. By working in lighter colors first, I can catch obvious drawing errors before moving on to darker, more permanent colors. And of course, I'm looking really closely at Hextian's concept art, as well as a selection of other faces he's done. I'm doing my best to emulate his style. Thank you. 
I've noticed he tends to give his dolls more glamorous makeup, very elegant and sophisticated. He's also great at making those poofy-licious eyelashes, so I'm thickening up the lashes with a sharp black pencil. So a pretty large chunk of the face is done by this point, and you may have noticed I added lots of layers of peach and tan pastel all over the face while I was working. The plan was to slowly build up pastel one layer at a time to cover up those red marks caused by the hair dye. Well, I ran into another problem. I was at the very bottom of the can, so my sealant sprayed out in larger droplets, totally ruining her skin. So that's a hard lesson learned, but be careful when you're near the end of a can of sealant. To salvage this, I'm actually going to take acetone and wipe the face clean around her eyes and brows. I'd prefer not to start over completely. And of course, I picked up a new can of sealant. I'll have to rework a couple things like the eyelashes, but it's worth redoing. Going in with the acrylic paints now. I couldn't get the watercolored pencils to produce the vibrant greens and reds in her eyes, so acrylic was essential here. One thing I really love about Hextian's work is the way he draws the iris. He's perfected that fuzzy, streaky pupil technique that sort of blends in with the iris. I tend to draw a defined circular pupil, so it was a fun challenge for me. I think this is the most on-point makeup I've ever drawn. You know it's a Hextian design when the makeup is sharp enough to kill a man. And of course I can't forget the teeth for the parted lips look. Paint an oblong shape in the center of the lips, then draw shading on the lips to create the illusion of an edge to where the lips meet the teeth. I worked back and forth on this part for a while because the colors were too saturated, but eventually everything looked about right. Lastly, I need to reapply the blush that got removed thanks to my earlier mistake. And finally, her face is done. With a full can, give your doll a final spray to seal it all in. To match Lilith's concept, I'll be applying fluffy fake lashes to the doll with tacky glue. One segment at a time, I dab on a little glue and press it onto the face. I saw this method done by Mozekito and it looked way easier than how I put eyelashes on my mermaid doll. But I'm still going to build up a couple layers of Elmer's glue around the lash bed for strength before painting it black to match. Now I can add gloss varnish to her eyes and lips for a shiny effect. To give myself a break from working on the head, I turn to the clothes. Hextian and I designed each other's own doll when it comes to face and hair, but we left it up to ourselves to figure out the outfits. I looked at a couple of his other dolls, as well as some 60s fashion styles, to come up with something I thought Lilith would wear. She even got a tiny manicure and a fierce set of heels. After reassembling her head to her body, the last step is that awesome hairstyle. At the moment she looks a lot like Jessie from Team Rocket. First I repart her hair where I specifically rooted it and bound it tightly with elastics that I'd saved from doll packaging. Now the twisting begins. To achieve the desired texture, I'm going to be twisting small strands of hair and securing them with twist ties to form very small, very tight curls. I got the idea off this video that showed you how to give Barbie a perm with pipe cleaners, so I'll link that below. I don't think I knew what I was getting myself into because, as you can imagine, it took quite a while. The entire time I worked on the hair, I was whispering words of encouragement like, please hold the curls, you can do this, I believe in you nylon hair. In hindsight, I should have chosen an entirely different material. I probably could have gotten this look with yarn in a third of the time. 
Whoops. A couple hours later, it's time to set the curl. To do this, dip your doll into hot water. Jeez, the dye still came out. I really didn't do that right. Then into cold water. Go back and forth a couple of times for good measure and then set your doll aside to dry overnight. And not bad. It's basically the right texture. All that's left to do is split the curls for a more dense volume, give it a trim, and shape it into place. Collaborating with Christian was an absolute blast, and I learned so much from trying to emulate his style. The doll customizing community is such a great place to be. I'm always learning things from other YouTubers and through the comments that you guys make. It's very rewarding. Give this video a thumbs up if you like Lilith's delightfully Hextian look, and be sure to head over to Hextian's channel to see what I put him through. Stay artsy! Annyeong!